The residents in Canada and northern United States will have a light show tonight. The unexpected geostorm will paint the sky with an amazing assortment of pink, purple, green, and blue. Unless the scientists are wrong, it would be a beauty, but not a beast. At least, not beasty enough to cause harm. It is called a G2 watch, or moderate geostorm watch. A geostorm or geomagnetic storm, when does that happen? Well, it is caused by solar wind interacting with the Earth's magnetic fields. The one scheduled to hit the Earth on March 22 to 24, 2019, will only affect some high-frequency radio or navigational signals. Sure, no big deal. In this internet era, who listens to the radio? But what will happen next time if it's a G3 or G4 that hits us? Actually, I don't care what they call these storms. I only care what will happen to us. We know in 1806 there was one as Alexander von Humboldt noticed his compass was going bananas during a bright aurora event. Then in 1859, sunspots and solar flares were observed before the Carrington event hit Earth a few days later. Actually, the coronal mass ejection, CM, reached Earth within 18 hours after being discovered. The hit was so intense, not only telegraph wires were affected, several fires were ignited, and telegraph operators were hit with shocks. The aurora was seen in Hawaii, Mexico and Italy. Luckily, Edison invented electric lights 20 years after the event, or the shockwave would have hit more than just a few telegraph operators. The same year, a less severe storm happened. Then another one in 1882 and 1921. But with more reliance on technology, the 1960 storm caused a widespread radio disruption. And in August 1972, a series of flares produced the fastest CME, which disrupted communication and electrical networks in several areas. Then the 1989 Eagle Magnetic Storm caused the collapse of a hydro quack power grid and left 6 million people without power for 9 hours. Auroras from this storm will be seen as far away as Texas. More recently in 2000 and 2003, many radio blackouts occurred on November 4, 2003. Most of us lived through those blackouts without noticing it. I am sorry to say this, but we all know the radio was really a thing of the past. But an even bigger solar storm would affect GPS, cause satellite hardware damage, kill communications, affect electrical systems, and disrupt main electrical grids. Although I can't find scientific reports on if the solar storm shockwave will hurt cell phone users like they did to telegraphic operators before, I know cell phone users will be shocked because not having perfect reception would be enough to drive users crazy. No, no, no! I need my phone! A few of you would have noticed another big problem. When the last solar storm, which was observed in 1859, we had only 18 hours before the light show began. What can you do in 18 hours? You would be lucky if you could buy enough gas to feed the generator. But is there any better warning system? Well, I hate to tell you, because you for sure won't take me serious. But back in April 2017, a strange-looking crop circle appeared in North Brabant, Netherlands. And on May 8, 2017, a small YouTube channel reported it as a possible solar storm. Look at the video. 
Based on the planetary alignment, similar to the crop circle, the team indicated not only this may be a big solar storm, the time period of the solar storm would be around August 6, 2017, and the Earth would catch a lucky break that the flare would be shooting at the other direction, because the map showed a bulge between Venus and Mars. They predicted it as towards Venus. With only a few thousand views, no one paid any attention. But the solar storm did happen around July 18th, 2017. And that small team's solar storm warning on July 18th went totally unnoticed with only 589 views. Although the Northern Lights can be seen as far south as New York to Washington State, then in September 2017, NASA showed how Mars was hit big time by solar storms. And as we predicted, the Earth happened to be on the other side of the Sun while Venus was not far from Mars. If Mars, 142 million miles from the Sun, can be hit this bad, how bad would we be hit if the solar flares were aimed at us 93 million miles from the Sun? Of course, you may have guessed, the small YouTube channel is us, the Mystery Decoder. And although our voice was neither loud nor clear, we must yell out again. Be careful about solar storms. Don't buy electric company stocks. Sure, we are just kidding. When our way of life is at risk, who would care about money? This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.